Jonathan Chag here for Woe TV, joined today by UFC flyweight Ian McCall. How are we doing today, Ian? Doing wonderful. It's a beautiful day, and uh, yeah, it's it's just nice to be alive today. I guess I just feel really good. Good, good stuff. I've seen you walking around the hotel and and chatting with people. You seem very, very uber relaxed. I would say ahead of Saturday night. Yeah, I, I'm always. Uh, I'm always relaxed in 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 the the face of you know adversity or whatever whatever you want to call it. Um, I like this stuff. It's fun, you know. It's get off on it in some sick way, you know. It's it's a good time. Okay, and and I mean we're literally off camera. You can't see in the background. We're literally looking onto the the the, the scene of Saturday night, the O2. Um, first, before we we move on to your fight, obviously the headliner Conor McGregor. Um, it's creating a lot of hype uh, around this uh, continent uh, amongst the MMA community and obviously making some noise in the US as well you know some US fighters that he's riled as well um, have you been impressed with not only his displays inside the cage so far but his demeanor outside the cage you know I and not to sound pompous or anything uh, I don't when I he first if his name was first brought up I had no idea who he was because I, I I'm not you know, I don't follow that, you know, in depth. But if I'm going to look into something, I'm going to look into it. So it kind of sparked my interest. I looked him up, and he's he's got two solid wins over guys that are decent, a little undersized, I think. Um, and he's he's a lot bigger than I thought. Uh, and obviously he's talented. He works hard. He's athletic. Um, what interests me more is outside of the cage is his – overall demeanor, uh, the wordage he's using, the, you know, because I, I break things down on a very, uh, there's a lot of levels, <laughs> you know, I like to go through and, and study stuff, and he's interesting, you know, and he's got good taste in hair, and, and suits, you know, he dresses well, you know, I used to work for a fashion company, so I, I, I like things like that, and he carries himself well. And, and yeah, he's confident. You know, that's good. That's what that's what he needs. That's what we all need. But um, I'm I'm really interested to see how this plays out. You know, because I'm I'm very rarely that you know enthralled by something like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and do you understand the kind of the skepticism from kind of uh, U.S. MMA media and fans alike that there's this guy who, who talks a great game. Obviously, he's been impressive so far, but has he, you know, has he really been tested against the elite of the division? Uh, do you understand the scepticism from the other side of the pond at, the, at this moment in time about Connor? Of course. I, I, I mean, someone who's going to talk that much and someone who, who hasn't had their chance to prove themselves yet completely is always going to get, you know, is, is going to get some flack, but it's his time it's his time to prove it and then if he does awesome if he doesn't then he'll receive a lot of uh <laughs> a lot of hate mail but you know it, it's uh it's just really it's fun to watch you know and i'm and i'm 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 very rarely amused by things and like you know like that and this is this is interesting okay right and and and, and do you believe just last question now on connor do you believe that the UFC should be mindful to not fast track him. Obviously, if he if he wins impressively against a really tough opponent on Saturday, by no means a gimme fight yeah. against Diego Brandao. Um, the UFC should possibly be mindful to not throw him in there, maybe with a top five straight away. Um, you know, maybe build him up gradually. That would be sm that would be more more smart. That would that would be. I mean, for him to beat Diego, is Diego ranked? Um, the top of my head, I don't know if he's ranked. If so, it'll be the towards the bottom of the top ten, I would yeah. say. So say, say theoretically he's top fifteen. Then you go, if he gets past Diego, then he fights someone top ten, and then you give him someone top five. And and uh, I mean Aldo is king. That's a scary man. And uh, you know I, I think it would be good for not only him because of course he you know he wants it now, but for his career and for everything else. Um, It'd be smarter to do that, but if he puts on a show on, on Saturday and everyone's wowed by it, then, then sure. You know, if, if, he, if, he, if he earns it spectacularly, you know, then go for it. Cool. I, I just, I know how to build a fighter, and I've been around this forever. And, and he, sh you know, he should take his time, but, you know, what's the fun in that? 
absolutely and, and then sort of well I suppose that neatly segues on onto yourself and uh, and your your route back to the top and and getting back what you rightly believe is yours um, obviously you've got a tough fight against Brad who, who's a, a very gritty talented fighter here from the UK um, do you believe that an impressive victory over Brad will propel you right back into that, that title contention frame. With the landscape of, of my division, I think it, it, it definitely can. I mean, I, I don't... I, I like to earn things. I don't mind fighting, you know, a couple more times. Um, but sure, if I'm going to give a title shot or be given a title shot, I, I'll take it, you know, and, and I, I don't see anything in Demetrius that has changed too much that is um, is going to pose problems, you know. It's it's just he does get better every time, but you know, so do the rest of us. Yeah. And and I mean, you still obviously, uh, from your perspective, you still feel that you won that fight against Demetrius. Yes, I do. And even if it was a draw, I would have buried him in the fourth round. And I think the whole world knows that. And you know, it's history, so it's it's time to. Uh, I got, I'm kind of starting over, I guess. And then, uh, sort of more specifically, then moving on to Saturday, where do you see? How do you envisage the fight playing out on the feet, on the ground? You win, winning via spectacular knockout or sub. I mean, do you visualise these things? Do you kind of imagine? Yeah, I have a a, a weird uh, feeling that I'm gonna I'm gonna get him in a rear naked or choke him somehow. I just feel like I'm going to punch him a bunch and he's going to take some wild shot, take a chance, and then I'm going to end up in a scramble situation and that's not where he wants to be. I mean, you know, he is well-rounded and good, but uh, I, I actually just watched in detail his fight with Neil Siri, and uh, I'm excited. I, you know, that's, that's, it's just going to go well. And do, do you feel, Brad, uh, the, the weight cut down to flyweight? Um, do you feel that the tracks from his aggressive style? It definitely does. Um, he obviously doesn't hit as hard at the higher weight or at the lower weight. Uh, he, his gas tank's still there, but you know I've got gas for days, and I, I think I can just you know pull him into the deep end and drown him. It's 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 what I usually do to most people, anyways. So um, and speed is a big thing. You know Neil outstruck him for the most part, and you know, Neil doesn't move his head. There's no footwork. Good boxer, but it's just, you know, punch placement and stuff. And and you, you go back to Eddie Wineland, uh, you know, uses footwork beautifully against Brad. And uh, I'm faster than Eddie, you know, and I have just as good a footwork, so if not better. Um, and nothing to take away from Eddie. He's awesome. I, I love that guy. But uh, and I believe that, it, that it's better, you know, so... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this more and more every second. Okay, and, and fair to say in the build-up to this fight that uh, uh, there's a little bit more animosity coming from his side of the equation than, than yourself. You seem pretty uh, chilled out about the whole thing at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's hard to ruffle my feathers. Uh, it's... I mean, even some people were saying, I won't say who, but um, we're like, wow, you're the first person to ever rile him up. You know, you're the, you're the, this is the first time we've ever seen it. And I, I was just having fun. You know, I was just, you know, poking the bear and it worked. <laughs> and, you know, I did back off. I, I thought about maybe doing a Dan Hardy, Marcus Davis and just being mean, you know. But, you know, I, I've endeared myself to fans so much that I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be looked at as a bad guy. You know, I don't, I don't. I don't want to. I'm not, you know, like Ronda or something where I, I don't care. I, I like being liked. <laughs> I don't want to be hated, you know. Um, it's it's just a, a personal thing that I, I enjoy, you know, having fans cheer for me. You know, it, it is interesting having like, you know, 15,000 Brazilians chant you're going to die. I, I got off on that too, but it's more fun to be loved. Yeah, I would agree with that, yeah. And, and then just moving on to yourself, sort of what I've noticed from the conversation I've had with you. You're a very intelligent bloke. I mean, uh, what kind of thing beyond fighting do you have any ideas about what you'd like to do when your career sort of uh, concludes? Uh, uh, you know, after fighting, you know, I'm a businessman 
and I was raised in the business family, you know, very savvy. I've owned businesses before. I just need to figure out what I want to do, you know. Um, you know, realistically, am I going to get into, like, fashion or something that really piques my interest? I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it, I guess only time will tell. Right now, I'm really just focused on my fighting because uh, the window's closing. You know, I'm 30, and let's say if I can get another five years out of it, if I can get five years out of it and get a title with and then and, 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 you know, get some real steam going, the businesses will just come to you. you know, I, I see my friends like Chuck Liddell, who, you know, he is successful because of his fighting. You know, that's who made him... Uh, that, that, that's what made him so, you know, so successful. And on top of that, you know, he, he gets into movies and stuff and, and all. And that would be fun. You know, I, have, I have a lot of friends. Some of my friends from the show Vikings are coming down. And they're going to watch. Uh, so it's, it would be an interesting career path. I, I, I wouldn't bet on it, you know. But if I could be in the movies and be silly, that would be, <laughs> you get to lie for a living. It, it sounds like fun. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, you, you've got the style and the personality for it. So I reckon uh, there's potential there. His potential. I, I could play like the just out of uh, high school tough guy for the rest of my life and just cover, <laughs> you know, cover myself with more tattoos. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll play a, you know, like a Danny Trejo role any day. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. All right, well, uh, thanks a lot for your time today, Ian. Really appreciate it, and, and best of luck on Saturday night. <laughs>